workstations or desks I was looking at were like starting at $25 to $4,000. At this point in time, it's like I'd rather invest into something else. Down the road, will I get a desk? Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Cedric. Welcome back to Sweet Scale TV. My new studio, Studio 3.0 is finally finished. So I basically took everything down. I listen to you guys, you guys are telling me I need to get acoustic treatment. studio it wasn't even really a studio to be honest it was a room with a bunch of music equipment before we go on any further i have to give a big shout out to my boy greg for coming through and helping me set up my desk i could have done all this no you couldn't yeah you're right i'll talk about that later on in the episode and i wanted to thank my boy nathaniel for pulling up anytime i appreciate you boy make sure you check out his channel i'm gonna leave his channel in the description below studio 3.0 let's get to it yo by the way I just picked up the Novation 61 SL MK3. That review is coming up in the next few episodes. If you haven't already joined the Sweet Scale family, hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification. Before we take a look at Studio 3.0, let's take a quick trip down memory lane and look at Studio 1 and 2. Sweet Scale, Sweet Scale, Sweet Scale. Without further ado, the brand new studio. This is my sanctuary. I just finished renovating two days ago, and yesterday I was in the studio all day, like I'm in heaven in here. Over the last year and a half, I read a lot of comments about my issues with acoustic treatment. I don't think I'll have that issue anymore. <laughs> kind of went overboard. Uh, I got padding all over the studio room. A couple of things I want to address. I know a lot of people are gonna tell me I should have the desk facing that way, but if I had the desk up against the window, I wouldn't have enough room for my camera and lighting. 90% of the reason why I have the desk facing this way is for being able to shoot episodes for YouTube and Twitch eventually and all that good stuff. So I got panels everywhere and it makes a big difference. If we go into the corner over here, if I bring in a singer into the studio or a rapper or an artist, they head over to this area over here, bring out the mic, and this is where they record. I got the acoustic panels off of Amazon. You can find a link in the description. If there is an acoustic treatment, it's like a poster, which is a big thing for me. I'm very much inspired by things I read constantly. And even though when I see them every single day, they're constant reminders. It's kind of subliminal where it's like, think outside the box, do what makes you happy. Don't quit now. All these things are constant reminders to me to keep working hard. I have a Kobe Bryant poster over here as well as a Kobe Bryant poster over there. Everyone knows what Kobe stood for, hard work, determination, you know, being great. It's a constant reminder to, to keep riding. Let's take a look at the desk. This is the focal point of Studio 3.0. So I built this custom studio desk with the help of my good friend, Greg. And when I say I, I mean, he built this desk. He came through with his daughter, Vanessa. There's a long story about how this desk was built. In life, I'm a problem solver. You give me a problem, I solve it. Well, Greg gave me a bunch of solutions and I made problems. It's so embarrassing how many times I messed up this desk, but it's finally here. The frame is built by a company in Montreal. They shipped it over. I got the frame in all white and then Greg 
built the shelves on top and the tray below for the keyboard. And I knew I wanted the shelf and the tray to be white. Why I bought this certain frame is the desk is adjustable. So I can lower the desk to 24.4 inches and it goes as high as 49.6 inches. Having a desk that's height adjustable is one of the biggest upgrades I could have ever made. You don't know how important it is until you have it. Like, I, I don't think I'd ever be able to go back to just having a table. Like, the workflow is phenomenal in here. And being able to stand, sit, use a stool, it's like life changing. I'm not gonna lie, when I used to have a table, there were times where I need to stand up, and because I'd stand up, I'd leave the room. And now the fact that I can stand and still work. It's priceless. Such a game changer. So I bought speaker stands. The speaker stands came in black. I spray painted them white and I really like the look. So I ended up spray painting the keyboard stand as well as the DJ stand all white. I really like the all white look. I don't think it's something you typically see. And I really wanted my studio to stand out. So on the studio desk, we got Novation Launchpad Pro, the Boss RC Looper 505, the Push 2, the APC 40, a keyboard and mouse, and then we have the pull-out tray for my MIDI keyboard. And set up lights underneath. You can, you can take a look at the lights, it's a little ghetto, but that's how you get that look, ladies and gentlemen. Now, when I was remodeling the studio, I knew I wanted to bring my keyboards back because I got some amazing sounds off of these keyboards. If you're new to the channel, I'm rocking with the Moog Little Fatty up top. Then we got the Motif XF6. I've mentioned this before, I have two Motifs. I've got the XF6 and the XF7 is in storage. I'm at a point where I might sell the XF7 because I used to use the XF6 on the road. I'm not really performing on the road anymore. I'm mainly in studio. There's a couple keyboards I'm interested in picking up. So I might trade in the XF7, we'll see. Then I have the Roland FA06 and the Jupiter 50 behind me. And the leads and the synths you can find on those bad boys are incredible. I got my DJ controller, again, all white frames. Right now I got the Roland DJ808 set up, but I go back and forth with uh, the Pioneer DJ SRT. Then I got my Yamaha HS7s. All my keyboards, my DJ controller is routed into my interface, which is the Roland OctaCapture. And then from the interface, I go to my looper, so I could really loop everything in the studio. A couple things that aren't set up right now, I have the Machine MK3, I still have that, I still rock with that whenever I wanna do finger drumming. I hope you guys enjoyed the studio tour. I didn't show you guys the studio to break. That's just not how I roll, but I'm very proud of what I have. I didn't start with much. Instead of buying a brand new car and buying some brand new shoes, I just kept saving my money to invest in music. It's not like I have a lot of money, but the money I have, I just reinvested in what I love. Every single weekend when I used to do gigs and get paid a hundred bucks, sometimes it was 75 bucks, I literally put that money aside so that I could build something I'm super proud of. Save up, invest in yourself, work with whatever you have. There's a lot of producers out there that are phenomenal and have very little. Keep putting out music, keep selling your beats, keep putting out your YouTube videos. In the long run, it will pay off. You can make it happen for yourself as well. So yeah, I'm just getting started. I'm excited to get to work. Be on the lookout for more. I appreciate you guys supporting me. It's your boy Cedric from Sweet Scale TV. I'm signing out. I'll see you guys in the next episode.